Good morning, Little Masters, and welcome back to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the Man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast. Let's keep Week 29 going with today's Third Age Thursday. It's time for us to revisit the familiar and less than familiar stories of the Third Age. Now, for the rest of Series 4, we're going to be reading through the story of Kirion and Aorl from Unfinished Tales and learning more about the origins of the people and nation of Rohan. Let's pick up where we left off last week after Kirion sent six brave men on the long ride north to Aorl and the Aotheot. The first pair of messengers left on the tenth day of Sulime, and in the event it was one of these, alone of all the six, who got through to the Aotheod. He was Borondir, a great rider of a family that claimed descent from a captain of the Northmen in the service of the kings of old. Of the others, no tidings were ever heard, save of Borondir's companion. He was slain by arrows in ambush as they passed near Dol Guldur, from which Borondir escaped by fortune and the speed of his horse. He was pursued as far north as the Gladden Fields, and often waylaid by men that came out of the forest and forced him to ride far out of the direct way. He came at last to the Aotheod after fifteen days, for the last two without food, and he was so spent that he could scarce speak his message to Aorl. It was then the twenty-fifth day of Sulime. Aorl took counsel with himself in silence, but not for long. Soon he rose, and he said, I will come. If the Mundberg falls, whither shall we flee from the darkness? Then he took Barandir's hand in token of his promise. Aorl at once summoned his council of elders and began to prepare for the great riding. But this took many days, for the host had to be gathered and mustered and thought taken for the ordering of the people and the defense of the land. At that time, the Aotheod were at peace and had no fear of war though it might prove otherwise when it became known that their lord had ridden away to battle far off in the south. Nonetheless, Aorl saw well that nothing less than his full strength would serve, and he must risk all or draw back and break his promise. At last, the whole host was assembled, and only a few hundreds were left behind to support the men unfitted for such a desperate venture by youth or age. It was then the sixth day of the month of Verese. On that day, in silence, the great Eoher set out, leaving fear behind, and taking with them small hope, for they knew not what lay before them, either on the road or at its end. It is said that Aora led forth some seven thousand fully armed riders, and some hundreds of horsed archers. At his right hand rode Barandir, to serve as guide so far as he might, since he had lately passed through the lands. But this great host was not threatened or assailed during its long journey down the vales of Anduin. Such folk of good or evil kind as saw it approach fled out of its path for fear of its might and splendor. As it drew southward and passed by southern Mirkwood, below the great east bite, which was now infested by the Balchoth, still there was no sign of men, in force or in scouting parties, to bar their road or to spy upon their coming. In part, this was due to events unknown to them, which had come to pass since Barandir set out. But other powers also were at work. For when at last the host drew near to Dol Guldur, Aorl turned away westward for fear of the dark shadow and cloud that flowed out from it. And then he rode on within sight of Anduin. Many of the riders turned their eyes thither, half in fear and half in hope, to glimpse from afar the shimmer of the Dwimmerdeen the perilous land that in legends of their people was said to shine like gold in the springtime. But now it seemed shrouded in a gleaming mist, and to their dismay the mist passed over the river and flowed over the land before them. Aorl did not halt. Ride on, he commanded. There is no other way to take. After so long a road shall we be held back from battle by a river mist? As they drew nearer, they saw that the white mist was driving back the glooms of Dol Guldur, and soon they passed into it, riding slowly at first and warily, but under its canopy all things were lit with a clear and shadowless light, while to left and right they were guarded, as it were, by white walls of secrecy. "'The Lady of the Golden Wood is on our side, it seems,' said Barandir. "'Maybe,' said Aorl. 
but at least I will trust the wisdom of Felleroff. He sends no evil. His heart is high, and his weariness is healed. He strains to be given his head. So be it, for never have I had more need of secrecy and speed. Then Felleroff sprang forward, and all the host behind followed like a great wind, but in a strange silence, as if their hooves did not beat upon the ground. So they rode on, as fresh and eager as on the morning of their setting out, during that day and the next. But at dawn of the third day, they rose from their rest, and suddenly the mist was gone, and they saw that they were far out in the open lands. On their right, the Anduin lay near, but they had almost passed its great eastward loop, and the Undeeps were in sight. It was the morning of the fifteenth day of Vresse, and they had come there at a speed beyond hope. Now, there are a few footnotes from the text that I want to bring to your attention, as well as just general things to talk about. First, I want to talk about the amazing and obviously slightly lucky Barandir. A footnote to the text tells us that his name was long remembered in the song of Rohan Methestel, writer of the Last Hope, as Barandir Udalraf, Barandir the Stirrupless, for he rode back with the Eoher at the right hand of Eoro, and was the first to cross the limelight and cleave a path to the aid of Kirion. He fell at last on the field of Celebrant, defending his lord to the great grief of Gondor and the Eotheod, and was afterwards laid in tomb in the hollows of Minas Tirith. Now, I'm sure I knew or remembered that somewhere in the back of my mind, but wow, just what a story leading even Aeoril himself across the limelight as he made his way to fight by the side of his Lord Kirion. What a moment that is. And then I want to skip forward to the very end of the passage that I read, that speed beyond hope. Christopher Tolkien explains a bit more in a footnote. He says, In nine days they had covered more than 500 miles in a direct line, probably more than 600 as they rode. Though there were no great natural obstacles on the east side of Anduin, much of the land was now desolate, and roads or horse paths running southward were lost or little used. Only for short periods were they able to ride at speed, and they needed also to husband their own strength and their horses, since they expected battle as soon as they reached the undeeps. Now still, while 600 miles on horseback in nine days while saving strength for battle is indeed impressive, remember that Kirion sent the riders out on the tenth day of Suleme as you remember from last week, roughly equivalent to mid-March. Barandor got to Aeoral 15 days later on the 25th day of Suleme, and then it took Aeoral time to muster his forces. By the time they left, it was the 6th day of Vresse, early April. And now it's the 15th day of Vresse by the time they arrive. That's 35 days from the time Kirion sent the riders to the time that help arrived. Now, it's a good thing that it did, though, as we read in the appendix to the Lord of the Rings. Thus Aeoril came to the battle of the Field of Celebrant, for that was the name of the green land that lay between Silverlode and Limlight. There the northern army of Gondor was in peril. Defeated in the Wold and cut off from the south, it had been driven across the Limlight, and was then suddenly assailed by the orc host that pressed it towards the Anduin. All hope was lost. When, unlooked for, the riders came out of the north and broke upon the rear of the enemy. Then the fortunes of battle were reversed, and the enemy was driven with slaughter over Limlight. Aeora led his men in pursuit, and so great was the fear that went before the horsemen of the north that the invaders of the Wold were also thrown into panic, and the riders hunted them over the plains of Kalinarthon. Well, folks, that does it for this week's Third Age Thursday, but come back next week as we join Kirion and Aeoril after the battle. Please visit patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show, get an ad-free feed, a monthly hangout, a bonus weekly episode, and more. And then join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times as I welcome a special guest for Fandom Friday. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Podcast apps, follow or subscribe, and follow at Tolkien Times on all your social media. Finally, as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men. <laughs>